Hey folks, it's been a little bit, but Taco's back. Another episode of Taco Bonsai, where I'm going to try to get some work done. A couple repots. I'll trim this guy up, and I might even give it a repot if I'm daring enough. We'll see how I feel. But let's dive in. I'm going to assume my position off camera and start arranging things. So, ooh. since you guys have had all those beautiful noises. <clears throat> We're gonna work with this guy first, right here. So this is, I believe, a maple, but I really can't remember. As you can see, it's just starting to butt out. So I would like to get this repotted uh, before it becomes too late. Now it does have a funky root in there, so I want to start to address that. First things first, I'm gonna grab my tools. Uh, I'll probably do Quite some snipping here. I'm not sure which pot this is going to go into. It might just go into the larger pot below. It does have some drainage, but we'll see. I get it out of the pot, which of course I did a sort of fruit growing pot. This could be an apple seed. I don't remember. So you can see here all these roots coming out the bottom. Now the one thing that I do know is I'm not going to get any of this out of here without damaging it. So I'm just going to go through, give it some snips. And you can see on the bottom here, there's a larger root, but just the one. The rest of these are nice and small. I'll go ahead and give that a little. And I think it was just the right size for that hole there. So that might give me a little trouble getting this out. But right now we're looking good. Now this top here is pretty alive, so I'm going to leave it. Now I'm going to see if I can't just pull. Ooh. So, not the intent to have such a small root base, but it worked out nice. So, let's see what exactly I'm working with here. I'll do a little bit of pushing, pushing the soil out from around these roots. Um, I'm lucky that I have anything at all going on here. I didn't know what was happening. I thought this one was dead. Um, and, of course, this is one of the ones I'm waking up a little early. It looks okay. Um, a little, little bit of length there, but not too bad. Now, as far as dealing with this root, which is absurd, I don't know that I'll be able to do anything, do anything with it just yet. I'd love to cut it off. It might end up being a feature in the future, if I could tuck a rock under here. I'm not sure I want to do that. So I'm going to take the risk and take most of it off. I'm going to take it off to, whoop, the one, take it off to right here. What that's going to do is eliminate that part and leave me with some roots. Um, not all these are good, but at least now I've removed a big chunk of what would never be a part of the final design. So now I'm thinking if I want to go even further on that or if it's too risky. Most of my roots are on this upward sweep. So that's going to be tough. You can kind of see, sorry, I've been holding it off camera. So I think that's where I have to kind of end with this one. I don't know that I can do much more. A little, a little. The rest is out of here. This one's right on time for its repot as far as its health appearance goes, but I've had others that I didn't quite repot at the right time. So that's not bad. I think what I might do as well, oh, that's a little gnarly bug here. Bear that. And this is a very big problem for me, as you can imagine. A lot of plants in a very small space. I'm going to Take off this dead material and see how it does. Now, as far as containers, oh, I don't really have a whole lot of options. They're better. I could put it in here. I don't think it would grow very well. So I think I'm going to do. I'm going to reach over everything. Let's see if I've got a little. There we go. This is what I'll use right here. So it's quite large. But I think in a case such as this, that's going to be wise for me to use. It's going to be a lot more of what I need. 
this here, put it there. Pass over. And this is a seedling. I don't know if I grew it from seed or what. It is a seedling, so. Got a lot more time to work with it and get it to grow. Now I'm wondering if I've got a better container than this, because this is quite large. I don't know, I've got other containers all over the place. Let me see. If I can grab something a little bit smaller. Not too small. Here we go. This is what I prefer to use. Okay. I said I was going to use that instead. I'm going to go with this. It's not a training pot, but it is very good for growing roots. It's got lots and lots of drainage and I think in cases such as this, with a maple especially, if it did well in this pot, it should do very well in this one. Not a whole lot of sorting there. Ooh, a little sphagnum there. And this is some reused material for the bonsai soil. And that was a real quick repot. I am not terribly, terribly concerned with the roots on this. Not terribly, terribly happy with them either, but I think that I'm going to have to keep working at this because um, every maple I've ever had is trying to do that like trident root thing. So I'm glad this didn't. It may do worse to me. Who knows? As it is now, I think that's nice and firm. I get a little. All right. I think that one's just about good. So, as you can see, big pieces in there. Doesn't really matter. We're gonna go ahead and give it a water in. Move it off to the side. Grab my water, which was behind me. I'm poorly prepared today, huh? I'll say it. Nice water in. There we go. Does water in nicely, I'll say that. Ooh. So I'd find it hard to believe that this isn't watered in all the way now. And that is what I believe is maple. So I'll put this off to the side. I will reuse that water for other plants because I've got lots and lots of plants. I'll dump it in the bottom of my one pot here. This will go off to the side. All right. On to the next repot, of which I've got many. I am going to put this into a sort of container. It doesn't leak all over the place. I've got a bin that I had gotten from the farm. It was brand new when it went there. I'm not sure why exactly my grandmother had it, if it was my grandmother who did have it. It works nice for little pots like this, so you can see. I can get another pot at least in there. A little clear food service. And that is all set. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. This one here is another one I want to repot. And not so much to get rid of anything, so much as to make sure everything's correct. So this one I'm going to recover the soil. I'm not going to mess with my microorganisms there, but I, I know I've got some bad roots here. And of course you can see I've got, you know, buds already out. I did come a little bit late to this party, but it needs to be done. So down here and of course I do not want this. It's gonna come off. Up here I've got these other couple of branches. They're okay. This one's a little low, so I'm gonna take it off. I don't intend to have a tree that short. This one's also low. Oops. Low and then I've got a few coming from the same place up here. This is my lowest. These are my almost lowest. I think I want to take off both of these. They're grown underneath. It would fill in nicely, but oh my god, these are dull scissors. I am not looking to do that. Now this one is quite low as well. I'm going to take it off. This is going to be a little bit of a taller tree. This is not anything particularly special as far as elms go. I think that had to a little bit more. A little more here. 
bit better. Moving up, you can see up here maybe. Oop, a little too far down. All right, you can see up here that I did have some issues with a lot of other branches kind of growing in. Now they're growing nice and vertical. I'm okay with them growing there, but I think this one needs to come off because it's in the front. It's not going to be a leader. So it needs to go. And I've got these two coming out the back here. I'm going to wait and see which one of those develops better and then trim them. They're so small now, it's okay. And up here, a leader right off a little bit. But I will trim this back a little bit more. Cover the camera. Have a better opportunity to there. Have some concave cutters here. Hopefully it'll work. Well, maybe not. There we go. There we go. Much better. Just ooh, clean that up with the sharp ones. Those are not the sharpest concave cutters at all. Not great. Ooh, I probably need to get new concave cutters. I think I've also sharpened them so much they're halfway to. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, I've got good buds up here. I think this one I do what I want it to do. I'm not gonna mess with it. This one's growing back over, so it actually should go. And we'll take it off. And that might be it. That might be all I can do at this point. Um We'll see how it grows. As it is, I think the top of the tree looks okay. Now it's time to work on the bottom of the tree. So, like I said, I'm going to recover my soil, but I want to work on these roots and make sure there's nothing that needs to be addressed. So, nothing's coming up the bottom yet, but it's a young, or say early in development tree, so I'm not trying to have issues. Decent little root mat. I'm not upset about that. Just over here for a bit. Ooh. You can see here, my screen is irregular shaped, but it's got some roots growing over it. So this will be quite the adventure. I might go ahead and get after it. And again, I'm not repining it because root bound or I need to. I'm repining it because I'm pretty confident in its virility. I'm just about the perfect time, and I want to make sure I'm correcting any issues early on with these roots. I want to start working on getting what could be a really cool root base because these trees do have really cool roots when they're in the wild. I've got some circling roots here. I can feel them. So that's always fun. Um, and again, I'm not 100% sure this is a Chinese elm. When I collected this, I actually had no leaves on it at all. Um, it was quite late, so I'm not sure why it didn't have any leaves on it. But leafed out later and it turned out to be a really cool tree. I guess I've had this one almost a year. It was a collected wild specimen, of course. Oh man, this thing is just ooh. Got some roots in it for sure. You can see now that I've got it sort of started to comb out, there's a lot going on. And I have repotted this one before. I don't believe I put it right into that pot as it was, but it's possible I did. I repied it last year about this time. I decided to leave this root here. Looking at it, it looks like I've got more options than I did last year, so I'm glad I'm doing this now before it becomes too late for uh, good timing. This is essentially a, a cutting. I didn't do a really good job collecting it. There wasn't a whole lot of roots on it. All right. So there's my roots. I'm going to go ahead and be not lazy, but bad. I'm going to put this right back in the same pot with all the same soil, even though that's probably ill-advised. The reality of it is, ooh, not bad soil. Ooh, I'm fairly certain ooh, I can make it work. So, I'm going to start with that. But I've got to do some sorting here, so. First things first, I'm looking at this and it's all just super, super long. So I'm gonna start off ooh, by doing a little trim on the bottom. 
just to make sure I know what's going on. That's a lot less to deal with now that I've done that. And oof, I do think I need to rinse this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to poke my head outside, use some rain water to rinse this with. Alright, a little more visible now. So all I did was dunk it in and squish it a little bit. And I can see already that I've got some issues. Not huge issues, but some issues. Um, looking now, I don't believe I want these up high roots here. I think this is not the, the best place for them. Let me take them off. Ooh, because my widest point, I believe, is down at the bottom there. That one's gone. This one's gone. Also on this side, got this one, this one, need to go. This one, which curls back up, also needs to go. Again, it's too high. And we're getting down into, well, closer to the actual root base. <coughs> now this is a big, thick root here. Got a small one next to it, so I'll see if I can't do this. All right, so now I've got the small one I can tuck down, much in the way that I tuck this one down. This one here is a little high for my root base. Ooh. Take it off. And I've got ones like this that are coming back up. I'm going to go ahead and take that off because I've got smaller roots below that. And again, this one's nice and small. It can be tucked down. This one can be tucked down. And I've got pretty decent roots coming out from below here. I do want to address those. This is a thicker root here. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. I'm not dealing with any kind of weirdness, but I think the rest of these almost, oh, there's one right here, it prevents it. Right here, it's preventing it from sitting flat. So that's going to come off. And now I can, yeah, I can let it sit in very nice and flat. And again, I've got circling roots, so I've got to make sure I take those off. There, there. I'm not going to be able to redirect those ends as well. I'm not the sharp super scissors either. All right, right here, I've got two that are crossing each other. In fact, this one crosses into the entire bottom. If I can unwind that, I'd rather unwind it. This one right here. And pull that out here instead. You can see there's no new root growth, so that's good. There we go, that's a little better. Crossing each other, so really, this one here is my problem child. Let's see if I can get that kind of worked out. Ooh. Don't want to rip off all my living roots. I'm going to get this out. This one's going to tuck here. I'm just going to tuck it up while I'm working on this one. This one. All right. I think I can make that work. More than I'd like over there, but that's fine. Another one here that oof, isn't quite where I need to be, so that comes off. I think I've gotten all my circling roots. I do have one here that kind of the edge and split, I believe. That's my higher up root, and I think I'm almost done here. Now that higher up root, I don't mind it. That's not an aerial root per se, but I can tuck it down in with the base. You can see all these tucked down roots are going to be real nice for me. Hopefully this one will continue to grow and I'll get a nice, uh, what should I call it? Oof. Uh, buttressed root. Is that what I'm thinking of, buttress? Yeah, hey, hopefully get a little buttress out of that. Okay. I would love to get buttress roots, and I think this is how you grow them, is you take the roots and tuck them down against the base, and they keep growing. So I think that's good. It's not all of it gone. It's much healthier than I thought it was going to be, so I'm very pleased with that. <coughs> with that, sorry. 
I'm just losing my voice all day today. I'm going to mound this up real, real good. Kind of mash this in. And try to get all these roots mashed down, if that makes sense. I want them all to be in the soil, not on the soil. I want them all pointed down. I think I've got to take some out. Just fine. I can do that all day long. Ooh. Get some out of there. Now I'm going to try to just mound this up again. There we go. All right. That's much better. All right. Let's see if I can get some good soil on top of here. Brought that over. Ooh, don't want that in there. It is one of my good ones. Yep, it is. So I need to tuck that down. Now I'm sure I should be careful about using soil, but I don't have any pests on this one. Really. This one's been really good. Sorry, I'm going to wait to pick up more of my soil here. And again, this is just a real golf course kind of thing. I'm very pleased with it so far. It's growing. I'd like it too. I'm really pleased I can put it right back in the same pot. So it's got plenty of room here still. And it wasn't because it was root bound or anything. I was doing it for that reason. I was doing it so that I would be able to address these roots. So I'm glad I did. There was quite a few roots there that didn't need to be the way that they were. All right. I'm going to put some of this in there too. I want all that extra stuff in there, of course. My, uh, my soul supply is getting more and more contaminated. I haven't been able to bake. I haven't been home to bake soil. All right. I'm going to start. And this is one where I'm going to follow the, you know, I don't know how many people say it, but a lot of people say it, to uh, lift a little bit. So you can get those roots starting to swoop downwards. And this is one where I really want to be careful with that because I'm going for that buttressed root system. I really don't want to mess that up. Be ashamed to work on these roots and then forget myself and just have a root going into, I don't know, anywhere but where it's supposed to. So I'm sure you guys are bouncing around a lot. Sorry about that. I'm not trying to uh, give anyone motion sickness. Let's see, we'll do one more scoop. Give it a little press, and I think this will be ready to go back on the shelf. I will water this through. I'm not gonna be silly and forget to do something as important as that. I don't believe I don't need to put any rocks on it. It's not terribly stable, but it's not disturbed. There's only slight airflow. I think that's good. Take this oh, onto here. Let's see how it waters in now. Excuse me. All right. Water's flowing out the bottom. I am pleased as of now with how this is growing. And I don't believe that any kind of buttressed root system, such as like this one here, will be a short-term goal. I think it will take a while for that to develop, but I'm going to keep that in mind. And I think that this one has had some good work done. In other words, a little bit funky, but again, I don't think I'm going to get that buttress root system this time. Ooh, a little scooch. Maybe I can. There we go. I think that worked. All right. It's a little straighter now. Water and make sure oops, that I've got there. So even something as little as adjusting that make a big difference in the long term, I think, for this tree. So if that ends up being a nice buttressed root, and I get some more, fantastic. This one ooh, is ready to sit in that little bin. And it fits just barely. Ooh. That can hang out there. Now, this one, I believe. Ooh, is a, whew, I think it's, 
Oh man, I'm not even sure. It's a maple. It might be a silver maple. It might be a red maple. I'm tempted to say it's silver because it's got some sphagnum here. Um, but I got this last year. It is a silver maple. And I decided I was going to you know, just plant as it was. Now it's, it's leaking out, so I'm a little bit late, but I'm hoping that it'll get that second flush real strong when the summer comes in, and it might even get a third flush. I'm trying to extend my growing season with all my uh, grow lights. Well, I just my magnet here. It helps a little with stability. All right, so let's get this thing out of the bin. Uh, so before I do, I'm going to clean up slightly. I've got a lot, a lot of trash here. I probably shouldn't be leaving out. I'm just going to grab those out, put them to the side. The ones that I've used. I'm going to clean up all this mess of this trash and roots. It doesn't need to be here. All right. That's a little less stuff in the way. And we're going to get this out. Not marigolds, as you can imagine. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Also appears to be decent roots on this one. All right. Yeah, big gap there. That's not intentional, but thankfully, Ooh. decent roots and I don't know that I'll be able to reuse this container, but I don't know that I need to. It's got good roots. I'm not worried about it. So I'll start on one just going out the soil. Now, it might be that it has gaps like that because I did use a lot of sphagnum. I think this was, again, cutting or a seedling that I ordered online because I couldn't get my silver maples to grow from a, a collected specimen, which is fine. You know, you'd think that you could. Yeah, lots and lots of spag. But yeah, this one's a, ooh. Ooh, nice. A lot of that just shed right off, which is why I needed. There's some roots in it, but not so many that it's unmanageable. I'm going to take that sphagnum and put it into the trash pile. I'm not going to need that in the future. So it is strange that my roots are so low, but I think I planted this very, very deeply to make sure that I wouldn't have issues with watering. All right. You can see already I scraped the root here, so I'm going to be a little more gentle than I am. That may be from me tearing off the sphagnum when I broke a root, but things happen. Definitely got to work on my technique as far as repotting. Always will be able to. So it's possible I just did that because I'm not good with my technique. Oh, all right, more sphagnum at the bottom here. I'm really curious how much of this is sphagnum and how much of this is bonsai soil. And I'm not sure there's as much bonsai soil as there is sphagnum. There's a lot of sphagnum here. Lots and lots of... Ooh. Yes, this is all sphagnum down here, I believe. Let me see if I can get that out. So the long fiber sphagnum, I believe, works very well, but it is sort of difficult to remove from roots. I'm not sure I would use it again, given the option. See how much of it just doesn't want to let go. If it is sphagnum, I assume it is. All right. I'm going to start by rinsing this. Seems to have a sort of two tier root plane, and then see if I can get a little better visibility after rinsing. Splish, splish, splash. All right. That did help quite a bit. All right. Oof. Back in. Oof. And you can see helped quite a bit with visibility. So 
what I'm seeing is that I've got deep tap root. Most of my roots are down here low, and then I've got these ones up here that are high. And that is really where my widest point is, is up here. Now, I can try to address that inverse taper as an issue, or I can embrace it. And this tree is young, so it'll grow out of a lot of that. And I'm going to do just that. I'm going to see how well it grows out of it. All those up high roots that are probably the correct roots from a design perspective. We're going to go here. And then I've got a much more one level root plane. And that helps quite a bit when it comes down to development. All right, got most of my sphagnum out of there. Ooh. That to the side. Let's see if I can grab another container that's similarly sized for this one. I just want to have a lot of good drainage. Doesn't have to be perfect drainage, but a lot of good drainage certainly would be nice. So I'm going to check and see if I've got a good one here. I do. All right. So for this one, I'm going to go with a root growing basket. I've got this one. You know, not the prettiest, but it does work. And it will fit. So I'm going to do some pruning on these roots. One thing that I'm noticing is even though I did a good rinse, a lot of this sphagnum is still stuck in here. You can see it. This will be a real ooh, chore to get out of here. But it's got to be done. Do it oh, this way. I do like that it's easy to see what's sphagnum and what's not, but you can see there's a lot of sphagnum here. Not what I wanted. Big chunk loose in here, I think. And because this is a maple, I'm probably still going to have to deal with a longer taproot. Oh, some more. Which is silly. Get in there. And I just torn some roots out there, but get all this sphagnum out. So there. What a chore. Big old chunk there. All right. At the point now where I'm like, you know what? Whatever's left in there can just stay. Um, not the best root plane, but not the worst. I'm going to cut it off here because ooh, I don't want it to be wrapping around. This is kind of wrapping around, and that saves me a lot of time with that sphagnum. So it's starting. It's going to be a good root plane. I do take off this, it's headed the wrong way. Ooh. I think after that, it's just a profile printing. Um, really nice looking roots. And again, it's a really small part of the tree, but that's where everything starts. It starts in somewhere. My hope, <coughs> excuse me, as time goes on, I'll get a better tree out of this. But in the meantime, go ahead and get myself set up with base layer. I can leave a little bit of sphagnum in here. It's not going to be a big deal. Nice little base layer. And then I've got to fill in on top. Again, I know it's definitely a faux pas to the soil. It's not the best for the health of the trees. But I'm doing what I can 
to address issues. I'm not trying to completely repot trees. You know, this is a full repot. I'm not. Ooh. Really trying to change anything more than I already have. One thing that I'm sure someone can argue is different, but in my head it works, is that uh, when you change out the soil, that makes it a complete repot. You can do root pruning, put it in the same soil, in the same container, and you've kind of kept one thing the same. It's the same you know, environment in a way. It doesn't have to adjust to a new environment. It's just growing new roots in the same environment after a pruning. And so that's my thinking sometimes when I repot these. Now, I prefer to use brand new soil. I'm sure it's very good. Um, to always use new soil. But as it is now, pull that up. I do not want any more sagging there than I already have. Um, short on soil, I think it just needs to be addressed before I run out of time. So, ooh. and this one could be a really cool tree one day. Got a really bad inverse taper, but you know what? Just gotta start addressing it now. And as that root swell starts to swell, it should rise up to meet that. We'll see what happens, but I'm hopeful. Now this one could use some stones around it. First, I'm gonna ooh, take my water and just dump it right in. It's right back on top of there. And then I'll get some stones put up there. I had placed some over here, but I think I moved them. Here we are. Use them to hold up a different tree. So this one barely fits in here, doesn't it? Yep. Barely. That's okay. Yeah, very big rock for a very small tree. So that one go right there. That one's got to pop off. That can go here. I'll put one of the ones I'd started to polish. This one right here. So maybe not the best, but certainly as a new environment that can hopefully grow really well in. I'll put that one in the little tray here, and I'm going to move my elm into the bathroom while I work on my last two trees. This elm sits under grow lights along with all my other trees back here and it it's uh being woken up early so it should do really well last two trees you can see in the background there there is the other elm now this is the department store elm and i wanted to repot this throw a whole bunch of rocks around this for whatever reason um, but i hadn't gotten around to it yet let's see if i can get that evaluated at least um, again, since the grocery store elm, it's not exactly the healthiest, but it's recovered quite well from pruning. So they're supposed to be really strong trees. Um, and I'll just take this back, you know, just take the tips off of stuff. That way I've got a little bit more visibility in here. I'm not trying to win the awards, but just trying to take a little bit off the top. And we know that my plans for this are not to leave it. A bush right now. It's okay, it's a little bit bushy. It's not bothering me. Yep, this one's just growing right across. I'm just gonna take it off. Okay, it's still a little tall. Here it's growing at a funniest angle. I'm gonna leave it because it might end up being oof a leader one day. So take that off and then all the way across as well. Boom, take that off couple here that just grow in the wrong direction, but I'm not trying to make this look pretty. I'm trying to address some of those things. All right. So in the past, when I tried to pull this out of the pot, I just got the whole mess of cocoa coir come out just like that. There's a pot inside a pot, and I think I'm going to try to use that pot again so that I can at least attempt to give it a better root system. I've already got a screen cut that's about the right size. Uh, before I do anything, I gotta clean up some of these rocks and some of this stuff in here. Pull these out. I just pop these on top of my little fig over here. Nice and close by. Literally cheek to cheek with my fiddle fig, so, so 
a nice place to stack things. And this, I think, is probably my most recent pruning, even, or one of them. I pruned it very, very recently. Um, it, it grew back nicely, uh, especially being under a strong light. This is, in fact, uh, you know, caddy corner and below on the shelf from my other elm, the one I just repotted. All right, I'm going to use some of this the base layer. The first thing I gotta get, get it cleaned up a little bit, pull out some of this ag matter. Don't have a whole lot to work with, so it's gonna be good to use what I got. All right, now the real chore begins is combing this thing out to see what I've got. Um, I just put my roots down below, but oh god, well, there's a start right there. Jeez, if ever you were curious, that's a much better tree uh, once you get the top layer of soil off. And in fact, most of this is just breaking up. It feels like it's going to tear off. It's so heavy. Let me go ahead and just give it a little ooh, finger. So there's some new roots in here. That's good. Um, I've certainly got to, not bad, clear out all the soil. This is not the best soil for this tree. It's not the worst. I'm going to end up with a real ugly root system. Oop, that's just the wind. But might as well take advantage of it. I'm going to rinse this real quick and then come back at it. While I'm out here, I'm just going to dunk one of these down into the rainwater. Make sure it's watered plenty. Ooh, and another one, just real quick. A lot of trees out here that get a somewhat decent amount of watering, but not probably enough for what they need. So, sometimes I do just take a break to water them. This is a very long video, but you're seeing me fiddle with everything. You can see me in the background. I hope here. This is one of my oaks. It is alive. I don't know how well it'll come back this year. It is alive. It's a pin oak. And I'm seeing that this one will probably need a similar treatment to this elm that I'm working on now. All right. Ooh. I don't have to do for that one now. I don't have a whole lot else I can do with it, honestly, but... Ooh. Yeah. I didn't see if I had a scoop out here. I could scoop some water, but I do not. All right. Back to the elm. All right. Ooh. If I don't ooh, close that all the way, of course it's going to open up on me, right? All right. So here's what I'm looking at. <laughs> An absolute nightmare. An absolute nightmare. First thing I see is this giant taproot, which they did try to cut off, but it just decided it wasn't going to listen. Like, it's nice and wide. I do like that part. I'm not seeing an established base. So I'm going to go with what they went with. I'm just going to cut it off right here. I'm going to see if I can do that with my Ooh, concave cutters here. I left my ratcheting pruners in the car, so that's that's on me. Just trying to do this without ooh, destroying the roots that are here. They're not too, too bad. We'll see if I can pull it off. Imagine this is how I bent these. <laughs> they work okay. I'm sure a, 
Not that pair would work much better. All right, did I do it? Oh, I lost one. Or did I? Oh. That one comes down from the bottom. Didn't really lose any there. So you can see just how bad this is. Now this one's coming up. Coming across. Even if I replant this, you can see how messed up these roots really are. No way I could have used that. Now I'm left with this. Now, these are all twisted. I don't know if they're any good for that reason. Untwist that. That's a much better root. This one might be basically growing back from a cutting. So I can't use most of this. Ooh. That's no good. This is rotten. This is uh, looping around a funny direction. I try to straighten this out as much as possible. I kind of end up with that. And I think that's where I'd better leave it. I don't really have any other options here. This whole root base is a mess. I mean, yeah, lots of good feeder roots here. And you can see there's new... Oh, no, that's pine. <laughs> You'd think there'd be new, but there's no new growth on that. So, while I'm not happy about it, this is what I've got to stick with for now. I'm going to dunk it in there like that. Put some... Newish soil on top. Scoop things around to get back in my soil here. And then I'm going to move on from this one. This one was not in any way ideal, but if it survives, it's got a much better start. I can try to use those really funky roots as a sort of feature. I think at this chip juncture, this tree might have just been a waste. And that's what you get with some of these big box store supermarket Chinese elms, Tokyo teas, and all that. They they really don't usually have bonsai care into them. They're just kind of pruned in a way that makes them appealing. When I get trees like this and I have to go through all this, it's just you do what you can. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Am I too far up? Yeah, there we go. I'm just putting the soil in here so they can. continue to grow and hopefully flourish. Um, I do have some green on it. I took some off, so that will help it to recover a little bit. This one will likely be put in a shadier spot while it's recovering, a less lit spot while it's recovering. I do not need it to die on me. Oh, it's got virtually no roots. I mean, this is a rooted cutting at this point. It's a much better rooted cutting than it was before. It might have been a cutting in the first place. So that's what I'm left with. Better container, too. It was actually the container it came in, so I'm not upset about that either. I'll do a little dump of the water that's in here and give it a little bit more. See if I can't get it to. There we go. All right. There's one more now. Well, that drips through a little bit. I'm going to move my one maple back up here into the window, which is a spot just for it. Right above my one of my coffees. So that way I've got room to put this into the tray. And I will. It's right there next to the first maple. All right. Ooh, lots of repots. Not all of them, but some of them. And this is the last one. Now, this one's an actual exciting tree, but before I do any of that, I'm going to give you guys the point of view of, you know, I might try to root this. Would it be kind of cool to root this as a cutting? I don't know. It's not the best, but I've done stupider things, haven't I? Yeah, what if I just rooted that? Let's see, where am I at here, huh? Little big root, don't want that. This one seems to be really big too. If I get in here and that off, I think it comes from the side too. It does certainly. And then this one comes here. Where is it? Oh, got a little snip. Snips right down here. Yeah. 
not the best. So, as silly as it sounds, I'm going to put this into a uh, bit of soil, see if it roots. Worst case scenario, it doesn't, but best case scenario, it might be a really cool little tree. So, in the meantime, it's going to go. Hmm. Try to get the water, and I'm gonna clean up some of this stuff. These other roots, I don't think, are in any way worth it. I don't think so. All right. Now it's time for that magical roller coaster ride you guys know as the trash can. I'm gonna bring it over. I'm gonna fill up my water because, believe it or not, I watered all the plants today. You can probably tell by the condition of the soil; they are all quite. Damp, and my watering can is quite empty. So while that fills up, and I've got a couple minutes of that, I'm going to dump you guys out. So if everyone's ready, we're going to do it. Whee! All of this is going to go in the trash. Into the bin, into the compost, whatever you guys call it. Matter to me, it's all pretty much bad. Oh, there we go. All right, hopefully, no, we got motion sickness from that. Now I gotta get my use a magnet, hold this on to base here. All right, and the last one, I'll put that in front of you guys while I get this put away. This one is my ginkgo. Ginkgo biloba, which until recently I had never processed that biloba literally refers to the lobes. It has two lobes, biloba, um, or biloba, however people pronounce it. I thought that was too hilarious after all this time. I was like, oh, it must just be a type of ginkgo. It is ginkgo, every type of ginkgo as far as I know, but I'm sure there's ginkgo triloba and all that stuff, but it's just a description of the physical leaf, which is really funny. All right. We're getting there, guys. This is our last one. I don't know what container I'm going to put this into. I have no idea what these roots are like because this is such a strange tree to me. Now, this whole top here is alive, but this is the only part growing. Um, this one was in a pot that exploded. And so I just put it in this to keep it going. Ooh, a little straighter for you all. A little, a little crooked because the whole tray is. But let's see if I can get this out. Ooh. You can kind of see bits of the old pot they are still in there. This is from a different pot, not from this one, of course. You can see this one's in one shape. Whoa! And I have never worked with ginkgo before now. So this will be an adventure for me. I can see I put pretty decent soil in here. I have some, ooh, some of that stuff. All right, this is funny. Down here, it's all rotten. This isn't, but this is. So, I'll go ahead and cut it off anyways, because that was the plan. This out there, right? Yeah. That is bizarre. Yeah. All right. Now I'm looking, I see... Some of this looks like it's rotten, it's not, which is kind of cool. I'm going to go farther up to here. And hopefully, it's all kind of spongy. Bark. Hopefully, that's the right plane. Now, if I'm to leave it like this, this would become the new taproot, this nice long one here. I'll end up with the same issue as before, so I've got to take that off. A lot of roots, but got to be done. Let's go ahead and do a little... Clip up here in there. Now I believe it's got one root on this side, which may not even be alive. All these. This might be a root that was starting here, but I'm going to plant a little bit higher this time. This doesn't seem to grow roots very quickly, so even if I was put in something like this, it'd have a lot of room to grow. I think what I'm going to do oof, is grab a different container. It's a little bit smaller, but not too small. Plenty of holes in it. 
Oh, I just gotta find one I'm putting the holes in it. I've got lots of containers all over the place. I can never find the one I'm looking for. You know what? You know, I have a lot of holes in it, but I think it's the right container for now. This is one of those food bowls. I used to have my old silverberry in it, but I think it'll do. Yeah, it'll be just fine. All right. So, see if I can get this thing planted in such a way that it survives. I dare not take any more off. These, I'll mash this in here. Let those sit. Ooh. I am very much crowding this plant, but I really thought it was dead, so at this point we're on borrowed time anyways. Uh, it does not display a lot of signs of life, I guess, with how mushy the bark is. It wouldn't shock me if it was already in the process of rotting out, and I just had one last push of green before it dies. This was allowed to, of course, go into dormancy. Um, that's how the pot that it was in before froze and exploded. So that may have been even more what went wrong. Um, I probably am a little bit too late on repotting based on the condition of these roots, you know. But we'll see what happens. As it is, I'm going to get all potted up. A little bit closer to the center of the pot. It actually feels pretty stable, which is funny. And that's that. That was a lot of plants being repotted. Uh, oof, might even have some cuttings that I can make into other plants in case of that elm. Give that a little, oof. A little bit more on top here. I want to really give this a good chance. If I can, you know, mess with it this much, I might as well treat it well. And time for some water. So it's not as good of drainage as some of my other pots, but it does okay. It's only got the one hole in the bottom, but the hole is oof, just fine as long as I don't let it sit flat. Get another water in it and see how it looks. Ooh. Yeah. I need more drainage for this one, but for now, it's where it's going to sit. It doesn't seem to need a lot of water anyways. I'll have to do some more research on this tree, but this is my Cinco Biloba, and we will see how it does. All right. Oof. If you guys don't mind, I will give you a couple updates, because I have some. Uh, I mean, this is a lot of updates as it is. I think there's almost five trees. Four or five? Quite a bit. Of course, they've all got to go back. Um, but I'll put some more trees in front of us. Just as a little update. Um, my happiest update is one I did not have last year until much later in the year. Uh, but I'm going to move my olive out of the way just while I pull it out. They're kind of all stacked together. So this is a very happy update for me. Well, only half that's come out so far. This is oof, a crepe myrtle. So it's, you know, don't know how old this tree is, but you guys can imagine I'm quite attached to it. I really love the root base. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to keep this little piece inside here, but even if just this side survives, and I don't think that's the case, I think this will also come back out in the bud, I'll be very, very pleased. So that's a good update. I'll put that back in. Uh, of course, my olive is doing very, very well. I'm going to wait to prune this until it's got uh, new branchlets. Once it starts branching again off of the branches that have grown, it'll be time for that one. Another happy update, which is new to me this year, is my Coast Live Oak. This one's tough to see, but these are all new leaves. Very big leaves, but new leaves. So. At least this part is alive. It looks like I've got roots up in here, hard to say, but these make me happy. So this is doing very well. I have not repotted this one. I do not intend to repot it this year because it is a very new species to me. I want to be very cautious with it. 
I also have, ooh, yeah, I have a couple trees here. I'm gonna grab one of the two of my purple bow maple, which I think is probably one of the prettiest maples I've seen, sort of like the Korean maple that Nigel Saunders has. And I've never seen one like his. So these are a Chinese maple. And just look at how pretty those leaves are. Wow. These little seedlings that I bought online, I have two of these. Beautiful leaves. These aren't perfectly formed, but they almost look like a um, like a sweet gum. But then they start to square off and get like more points on them. They're so cool. So these two are doing very well. They've not been repotted, but they are seedlings. They still need to gain some vigor before I can think that it's a good idea to repot them just yet. Uh, they're not in terribly big pots, and they're in really good soil. So until they get root bound, I think they should just stay there. I'll be hurting myself more than helping myself on that one. All right. I want to give you guys one more update. Ah. On my rubber tree. Now I have a couple ficus, but this one is growing really, really well. And it's not characteristic of what I know a rubber tree to act like. Oof, sorry. Kind of pointed that the wrong direction there. All right. Here's my rubber tree. So, um,. It's doing well. You can see I've got some big leaves here. I've just trimmed the top here, so these now are going to hopefully branch, but the way this is growing and with the speed, it's got little leaves down below. I'm very pleased. If I keep my leaves this size on a rubber tree where they're usually, you know, three times that size, I'll be very, very happy. I've got a low branch, I've got a mid branch, and I've got this. I'm just going to try to get as much branching on this as I can. It has not yet been repotted. It's got, you know, some funny Roots that'll have to be addressed, but they're not too, too bad. I, there's just thick ones I need to trim down. Um, but I want to have this heal up a little bit more before I repot it. As funny as that sounds, I'm really concerned with how that's doing. It's not doing badly, uh, but I'd really like to see it heal more. So that is the last of the updates for today. I'm going to swing. Ooh, you guys, well, I'm going to swing around so you guys can look at me. Ooh, I put this back up. Then I'm just gonna dump this spiky thing in my finger. Great. So I'm not dumping this into a pot. I'm just dumping it into the tray that they're all sitting in. But uh, there we are. Hopefully, y'all can see me. Thank you all for joining me again. I know this was kind of scattered and fragmented as far as an episode goes. I'll watch it before I post it, so I can apologize to you all. But thank you all for watching. Um, we're solid above 400 followers now. Uh, we're well past a year and you guys are blowing me away. I think I've got two videos now that have more than a thousand views. One was at 999 the last time I looked, but I think you guys made it over a thousand for me. So thank you. Um, thank you to everyone who's been so supportive commenting, um, and being very patient with me because I haven't been commenting and doing videos like I should be. Uh, I do need to get back to that, but life is very, very busy. I've explained it too many times with the farm, all the jobs and course trees take a lot of time so i'm glad i was able to give you guys this it's a very long episode uh but hopefully you guys enjoy it and hopefully it wasn't too slow you can enjoy it a little bit uh, i apologize if i wasn't good about explaining all my choices but you know in the case of something like this not a lot of choices to make and i'll put this in some soil we'll see if it grows so i'll see you folks in the future well you'll see me in the future i hope to see some of you in the future y'all take care of yourselves cheers